Salutations and welcome to the farm. Well, recently in one of my organic produce subscription boxes, I received a couple of really small spaghetti squash. And I thought, oh, what am I gonna do with those? Really not big enough to, you know, to kind of cut in half, make a full meal out of or anything. They're just these little spaghetti squash. So I started looking around. I found a great recipe for another YouTuber. I will put the information and give her credit in the description below. I have some things in the fridge that I need to use up. I have some zoodles, which are some zucchini noodles. I've got some shredded carrots. I've got some other little doodads that I thought I need to find something to do with those. And I thought I will pair them with this little spaghetti squash and we are going to make spaghetti squash lasagna. Doesn't that sound unique? It sounds fun, it sounds delicious. I'm gonna to get to use some of my homemade pasta sauce that I canned this last summer. It's my last jar and we're gonna put it all together. The first thing I gotta do though is I've got to get this little spaghetti squash prepared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my instant pot. I am not even going to cut this in half. I'm not going to scoop the seeds out. I'm just going to pop it in my instant pot after I prepare it a little bit here and go through that with you. And then it'll be ready for me to start working on layering my lasagna. Now, if you don't have an instant pot, that's okay. You can cut this spaghetti. Spaghetti. You can cut the spaghetti. I said spaghetti. Spaghetti. You can cut the spaghetti squash in half lengthwise. You can scoop out all the innards, rub a little olive oil in there if you'd like, and then place them cut side down on a cookie sheet with some parchment paper. Pop it in the oven about 300, 350 degrees for you know 30, 40 minutes till all of that squash gets tender. You're gonna want to wait. You're going to want it to be fork flake tender where all of the little squash strands that look like spaghetti kind of peel away from the edge. But what we're going to do, like I said, is we're going to use my Instant Pot. So to prepare this, I've washed it real well, I've dried it, and I've got a little knife. And I'm just going to put, I don't know, seven or eight little sticks in it. So it can vent while it is steaming in the Instant Pot. There's seven, eight. I'm gonna stick this in the Instant Pot on manual high pressure for 15, 12, 15 minutes. This one's kind of small, I might go 12 minutes. You're gonna know that it's ready when you take it out of the Instant Pot and it's fork tender, a fork will slide into this hard outer shell. So I will be right back. I'm going to go get this ready. Okay, our spaghetti squash has been in the Instant Pot for 15 minutes. I did a quick release. I've just been letting it sit there. I took the lid off, been letting it cool. It's cool to the touch now on the outside. I'm not sure how it is on the inside yet. But what we want to do now is just want to take a knife and it should be very easy to cut. If you've ever had to cut a spaghetti squash when it's raw, it's very difficult. But taking care of it in the Instant Pot ahead of time much easier much easier to deal with just scoop out the seeds and the goop in the middle we'll throw that to the chickens I'm sure they will love it so I cleaned it all out this half here and I'll do the other half in just a moment but now what you want to do is just take a fork and shred your spaghetti squash into lovely little spaghetti looking strands and we're gonna put those in this bowl here. Look at this, just like spaghetti. And as you're doing that, just see, make sure, check to make sure that you haven't missed anything. And then wrap your fork around with those last little noodles that are just kind of hanging on. Noodles, huh? <laughs> see, I'm, I'm fooled. I'm saying noodles, they're not noodles, it's squash. You know what I mean. Kind of look, make sure you haven't missed anything, any little seeds or something that just doesn't look like it belongs there. Otherwise you end up with these lovely little noodles. All right, let's do the other half. We have our onion from our produce box. 
I did an unboxing of some of this fresh produce. I'll be sure to put an iCard up and put the link in the description below. We're going to cut up a little bit of onion here. We're just going to dice it real quick. <laughs> I'm trying to get a little piece of the onion paper off the cutting board and it's part of the cutting board. It's like, why won't it budge? We're going to sweat these down in a pan in just a little bit here. So you don't want to need them to be too fine, but you don't want any big chunks either. We've got some beautiful garlic and we're just going to probably mince up. Oh, let's, let's go for broke. Let's do four really nice cloves. Now we're going to sweat our onions first and then we'll add our garlic. We don't want the garlic to burn. So it pays to do things in stages and be patient. So I like to cut the ends off of my garlic. Always remember what you're doing. Cut the ends off the garlic, not the ends off your fingers. No need to rush. And then you just kind of take the flat edge of your knife, smack it, and it breaks open the paper on those cloves. And you just peel the paper right off. Now I save my onion papers, my onion scraps, my garlic papers, the ends of the garlic. I save all of that and I put that in a big Ziploc bag and I put all of that in the freezer. And then when that bag gets full, then I make my own veggie broth. And I make it in my Instant Pot. And then I can it in my pressure canner. And then I've got my very own veggie broth that I know that I've controlled everything that goes in it. I know that there's not any additives in it. I've controlled the salt if we're watching our salt. So later on I will do a video about making your own veggie broth as well. So we've got our garlic, we've got our onion. Let me grab a few more things. Okay I've got my induction cooktop here. We've got a medium-sized saucepan. We're going to start it on medium-high heat, and I have some basil-infused olive oil. We're just going to put a good dollop on the bottom of our pan here, a tablespoon or so. We're going to put our onions in, sweat these down a little bit. And you may notice I didn't measure anything. I'm just kind of going off the cuff here. If you feel more comfortable measuring, I'd say that's probably about a third of a cup of onion that's been diced. But again, it's entirely up to you. I mean, again, it depends on the size of your spaghetti squash. Depends on how many people you're feeding. There's only two of us here, so I don't need to make a big, huge casserole with this. We're just gonna keep it small, keep it simple. And I'm just cutting a little bit off and just chopping it up and throwing it in the pan. Now, if you've never had basil infused olive oil, another video I should probably do for you. I have my olive oil here in my decanter and anytime I get basil and I use it on a pizza or something, I take the stems, put it in a mason jar with the olive oil and I just let it sit for about a week. Then I pour it off into my little decanter here and it has been completely infused. It is so good. It smells beautiful. It tastes beautiful. I just love it. I try to do it with my olive oil all the time now because it's very rare that I don't use my olive oil unless it's for something that's, you know, of an Italian nature for food. So we're just going to take these until they're translucent. Until they're translucent. Yeah, I'm going to tell you a funny story. I had a tooth pulled back here back in August and ever since then I have developed a speech impediment and I'm constantly having to fix my words. And rather than be embarrassed about it, and I'm just going with the flow, correct myself when I need to, but sometimes it is a little frustrating, I will admit. Words that I used to be able to say without hesitation, I stumble over now. All right, let's add our garlic. 
to the mix here. And again, we want to be careful not to burn the garlic. I'm going to turn this down to medium for this step. Your garlic will become bitter. You don't want it bitter. Now, if you were going to have meat in your lasagna, you would, of course, put your meat in before the garlic with your onions, saute that up, get that all brown, take off any extra fat if you have that. I don't eat meat, but I do uh, use a meat substitute. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of this meat substitute that I have and just pop it in my pan, just enough to, to warm it through. I don't have to cook it, cook it, just warm it. And I'm using Italian crumbles because I think it would be nice to have some of that seasoning. So let's start this back up. Now, because it's the meat substitute, doesn't have a lot of natural fats in it, I'm gonna put a little bit more olive oil in it. Olive oil is a heart healthy oil. No reason I can't add just a little bit more. This is just to fuse the flavors together a little bit. So it won't be in here too long. And then when I'm done, I'm just gonna sprinkle some Italian seasoning on top. Give it a stir and just kind of let it sit while I'm taking care of other tasks for this dish. Okay, kids, out of the way, I got other, ooh, I got other things to do. I've got my tomato sauce. Now this is not a pasta sauce, this is my tomato sauce. Uh, I did this this fall with the Roma tomatoes from my garden. Like I said, it's my last one. I'm going to grow more tomatoes this year. Did you hear that? It's such a beautiful sound. Mmm. Gosh, they're so tasty. I'm going to pour them in this pan. So in my refrigerator, I have just a little container of cottage cheese. don't have any ricotta, but I do have cottage cheese. So we're gonna open this up and we're gonna utilize this. We're gonna make this little spatula pull double duty today. It all ends up in the same place. It won't hurt anything. We'll turn that into a mixing bowl here. And to that, I'm gonna add an egg. I'm gonna put in some Italian seasoning. I'm also going to put in some crushed red pepper flakes, just for a tiny little bit of heat. Not too much, but get a little flavor going in there. I'm not going to salt this. I'm not going to add pepper. I'll wait until after we get everything all baked up, and then we will. Because the cottage cheese is a little salty, as is, and we'll put the pepper on top when we're done. Okay. I think we're ready to assemble our dish. So on the bottom of my corral dish, just gonna put a little bit of my tomato sauce, just so we have a nice coating on the bottom. Nice. Now we're gonna add some of our meat sauce. We'll scrape about a third of it out, I think. Then we're gonna add a layer of our spaghetti squash noodles. So we're just going to sprinkle them out across what we've got in there now. We're going to put some shredded carrots in. I thought I had a fresh zucchini in the fridge and I did not. So I figured I better use up those zoodles. So we'll put some zoodles in here again for color. This is going to be beautiful. Now we're gonna take our cottage cheese mixture, spoon a healthy dose on top of that. I'm gonna use about half of it. And you're just gonna be able to use the back of a spatula, just spread it around to the edges. Perfect. Okay, more sauce. It's gonna pour on top of that. More of our meat mixture. Actually, I'm gonna put the rest of the meat mixture in. Let's do the next layer of cheese. We'll throw that in there. We're gonna put the rest of our spaghetti squash on top. Smooth that out evenly. Look at that, isn't that pretty? Look, beautiful. We're gonna take the rest of our carrots and sprinkle those on top. We're gonna to put the rest of our zoodles on top. 
and I'm going to put just a little bit more sauce. You don't want those spaghetti squash fibers to dry out. All right, now I'm going to cover this with foil. I'm going to pop it into the oven at about 325 or about 30 to 40 minutes. Then when it comes out and I make sure that it's looking good, I'll put some mozzarella cheese on top, pop it back in under the broiler, and we will be having our lasagna. So come back when we're ready for that step. Our spaghetti squash lasagna is done. Look at that, it's beautiful. I took it out earlier and I added some cheese on top, some mozzarella cheese, put it back in. It kind of allowed some of the liquid from the spaghetti sauce to cook off, bubble up on top. We've already had a salad, so now we're just gonna dish up a little bit of this lasagna and see how it is. Let's see how it looks when we cut into it. The dogs are all excited. My husband's home. They've had their dinner. Let's see if we can get a nice centerpiece. Okay. Mm, 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 mm. Ooh, that already tastes good. So there it is. Our spaghetti squash lasagna. I'm gonna go ahead, get things squared up here, head in and feed everybody, get the dog settled down. But I just wanted to share with you how beautiful it is. I'll take a picture, I'll pop it up right here, and um, we'll let you know how it tastes in the comments below. So thank you for joining me today as we used our spaghetti squash from our Misfits Market Box, and we made spaghetti squash lasagna. Thank you very much, have a great day. Take care and take care of one another. Bye-bye.